In a purely AC circuit, as shown in the figure, delta V max is 100 volts. The maximum current is 3.8 amps at 40 hertz. Calculate the inductance in millihenries. At what angular frequency, omega, is the maximum current of 1.9 amps? And it wants it in radians per second. So first let me start with the picture. You may be uh, scratching your head looking at the picture saying V max sine 2 pi F T. Well, quite honestly, I don't know why they put it in the picture either. But I'll go ahead and explain it. So if you have a delta V max, um, and then so the sine times the sine of the angle will give you, uh, it will give, so we'll, I'll just draw the picture. So the, here's delta V max. So we're drawing our phase picture again. And over here is delta V of a resistor. And then over here, this side of the, uh, the triangle would be delta V of an, in, an inductor only minus delta V of a capacitor. We're looking at the change of the voltage across the resistor, the change of voltage across the inductor, the change in voltage across the capacitor. The delta V max is going to be the vector sum of those things. And so right down here we have an angle, phi. So if we were, we're asking what is this quantity, this quantity would be delta V max times the sine of phi. So we know that 2 times pi times the frequency, 2 pi f, is equal to omega. So let's say in the sine of omega t. Well, omega is the, uh, is the angular displacement over time, and we're multiplying that by time. So we're just saying the sine of the angle. We're, we're asking, it's basically saying that this is this component of, of the voltage. In other words, there are no resistors. There's only and either inductors and capacitors or just inductors. It's just this is our component that we're looking at, which is equal to Vmax. And then it says that up here, it purely inductive AC circuit. So why they put it here, yeah, I don't know. But OK, so get that out of the way. We're going to put that in the trash can. And uh, we're going to start on this problem. So it wants to know what the inductance is. And it wants to know what the angular frequency is. So first part, we're going to use the, the general case of Ohm's law. Delta V max is equal to I max, the maximum current, times the impedance, Z, where Z, again, is equal to the square root. And so this is just Z now. I'm not saying the whole thing is equal to. Z is equal to the square root of R squared plus the inductive reactance minus the capacitive reactance. And so since this is a, oh, and that's squared. And so since this is a purely inductive circuit, that's zero and that's zero. And so we'll just take the, in, the inductive reactance squared and take the square root of that. So delta V max is equal to I max times the, the inductive reactance. Now it doesn't give us the inductive reactance. It gives us the inductance, well, what we're wanting to calculate is the inductance. We could care less what the inductive reactance is. We just want to know the inductance. So let's find the equation that relates the two inductive reactants is equal to 2 pi times the frequency times the inductance. So we can substitute that into our equation here and get delta V max is equal to I max times 2 times pi times the frequency times the inductance. And so we, uh, we could just solve for the inductance at this point, and we would get, uh, let's move some space over here. So we get that delta V max divided by I max times 2 times pi times the frequency is equal to the inductance. Now work all this out, plug in your numbers, but remember one thing, it wants the units in millihenries, so at the very end, times your answer by 10 to the third, and you should get millihenries. Now the second part of the question, it wants to know if the, so we're changing the, the maximum current. So whatever it said the maximum current was, we're saying, what if the maximum current was 1.9, what would the angular speed be? So what would omega be? Well, I don't see omega in my equation, but we know that omega is equal to 2 times pi times the frequency. So at this point, I can just simply take this and substitute it in for this quantity here. 
And then once the substitution is done, you get the delta V max over I max times omega is equal to the inductance. And then we just have to uh, move omega over here, or move inductance over here, move omega out here, and we'll have our, our symbolic answer, delta V max over I max times the inductance is equal to the angular, uh, the angular speed. Now this inductance is the same inductance that we solved for in part one, but we're just assuming that the current is going to change. We're going to add, uh, we're going to change the current a little bit. And so uh, if you do this, remember that you, in part one, you solved your inductance in millihenries. Now it has to be back in SI units. So you have to multiply it by 10 to the negative third uh, whenever you plug it in here. Okay, just so if you want to check yourself, you're not getting the right answer, you want to see how you're doing, uh, I got 104.707 for uh, millihenries for part A and 502.6548 radians per second for part B. Hey, thanks for watching. Make sure you check out my blog. The link is down in the About section of this video. And on the blog, you'll find cool stuff like other videos for the same chapter. And you'll also find uh, little download links where you can download calculators to uh, basically just punch in your numbers and solve these exact problems. So you won't even have to watch the video if you don't want to. The last thing I want to say is if you leave comments on YouTube, of course I will get around to responding, but I'm much faster if you leave them at the bottom of my blog, right down there. Enjoy your day.